Uh, I'm, go I'm going now moving towards construction. So, and this is coming to uh, make sense from my start. So, being is not only for design. So, we design, everyone is happy, we collaborate, we clash uh, checking, we check with other disciplines, everyone is happy, and then we move the models uh, to the contractor. Uh, funny enough, when I did university studies, uh, we were uh, studying uh, the different types of projects and uh, which ones were more uh, efficient or economic for the government, for instance. Uh, and in UK, uh, in that time, and I think even today, uh, alliances are the best way uh, for projects. Uh, so they bring a couple of different uh, contractors, maybe they have different expertise and they share the risk. Uh, they bring different uh, designers, again, with different expertise, and they share the risk of design. And everyone, including the client, work together to deliver the job. And then, if they make losses, everyone loses. If they gain, if they keep the milestones and keep reaching those deliverables, uh, they all get extra money uh, from, from the client. Uh, so, it's... Unfortunately, uh, we still have in EU, uh, EU allowing uh, very strange workflows for um, design and construction uh, instead of promoting the, because it uh, has been proven it is the best way uh, is the alliance. And the alliance is almost like being. Everyone is together, everyone is working with the same goal and everyone is collaborating. So, Let's move into construction. So we, we have all this hard work, uh, modeling and adding attributes into the models. Uh, so let's take that into the contractor. You can do the, the planning and the task scheduling inside Tecno uh, because we have attributes. And because we have attributes, we can say when that material is going to be ordered, when it's going to be placed on site, uh, when it's going to be erected. Uh, but uh, Contractors, they like to use Vico software or Vico software or Microsoft project. So we have direct links uh, with those uh, software. So you don't do the planning inside Tecla. You can use your specific uh, software. Uh, but the object, they have the information that you need. And then you check your uh, uh, the work construction path. Uh, and if something is delayed for some reason, uh, you can manipulate uh, in your own software but the information is there from the start, so you don't need to go back uh, and type uh, that information. The same with the erection planning. Uh, even for spacing, uh, we had situation in London, uh, one of the train stations, that we need to double check the trucks they could bring the precast things uh, from that, uh, those narrow roads in London. So, and we did that uh, visually. So we animated the, the tracks going through those, uh, those uh, streets in London, um, which again, in that case, the information was just go A to B, C, D, and so on, and then uh, having the path. Uh, but usually for erection planning, again, uh, you have your specific software, uh, you have the attributes, uh, and then uh, you you can uh, manage that on site. This is one of the examples uh, where they build on site and then they lift and they place the, the precast objects uh, and they need, they, they need to check uh, there is enough space for the, the cranes to, to rotate and if there are no clashes um, before they, they put the crane in place. So. Uh, obviously, uh, someone with lots of experience, uh, with uh, some tools, hand tools, they can do all that uh, planning. But uh, we have more and more new people, new blood coming into construction, and they don't have those skills. They don't have those skills. Uh, so, this is one way to guarantee that uh, a new uh, member of the team on site is uh, not doing a mistake because visually you can see there is enough space to manipulate the object and put that uh, in this case was a 
uh, beams uh, in place. Uh, poor planning, uh, we can do it. Uh, I can see here for bridges very useful uh, because in tradi traditional way we for this uh, three span uh, bridge uh, we'll model three different objects for the deck with the construction joint. We add the rebar with the starters and we move on. Uh, if we use the poor planning, we have only one object, we add the poor and then we still model the rebar with the starters. But later on if the, the construction joint uh, moves, uh, you just need to move the line. Uh, so you can control it that way. Formwork management. So if they are uh, modeling formwork, uh, then obviously you can manage the, uh, all that. Uh, do you have enough um, formwork uh, to, to build that specific uh, uh, wall uh, in that time? Uh, do you need to bring more to the site and so on? Because, again, the attributes are there uh, available to be used. This happens a lot with design build, that uh, the, we always need to deliver the final product to the client with the design intent. Uh, but uh, many times happens, and that happened with me in the past, I was finished uh, models uh, today, uh, during the night I was thinking, oh, I forgot something, it was too late. Because in the next morning they were already pouring the concrete or they bent all the bars. So it's sometimes you need to filter and say, okay, give me just the foundation and the starters. Uh, and I, I don't care about the, uh, the peers. For now we need to have the guys on site uh, uh, busy. So for that we can use the organizer, filter out which bars we want to give to, to the contractor, uh, and then uh, just issue those bars. Uh, and still progress the design for the superstructure uh, and even creating then the normal drawings. But sometimes they are in a hurry, they don't care about drawings, just give us the, the bar bending shell because we need to start building bars. We cannot afford to, to be on site. Every day on site with no production <coughs> is quite costly. This is another way uh, in order to be efficient. Give me all the 20 diameter straight bars, all the 20 diameters U bars or L bars, so we can filter out uh, that information and give the, the, the files to the bar bending machines. And now we move to the fabrication. Uh, in the, I will start with the layout points or setting out points depends where you are uh, in the world. Uh, it's crucial. So if you have our model in the correct location, uh, correct um, uh, setting up uh, points, uh, we need to give that information uh, to the contractor because then they can pass these points to the, um, to the laser scans and then implement, uh, hopefully implement the bridge in the correct uh, place. So if we have the information, just pass the information. Uh, just don't type the north and easting value just take it automatically. Every time we input something manually, we increase the risk of uh, an error. <coughs> we are proud, and again, this lovely word, uh, so <coughs> we have, we are very strong in steel fabrication, fa fabrication uh, because Tecla connects uh, with the majority of this uh, heavy uh, machinery, but unfortunately I've never seen it uh, the, the steel work, never seen it on site. I, I more my background more from rebar, uh, but they have all that amazing uh, connections, and I'll show again that. For the rebar, this is it. So we can give the bar bendings, we can give the drawings, but you can have the, uh, I think it's in Germany, they use a lot BVBS uh, files uh, to the bar bending machines, uh, bend the bars automatically. Uh, a funny story, real story of my experience, um, is that uh, we were doing in the Middle East a big job with the convex uh, reinforcement. Uh, I was very proud, uh, the team was producing uh, 700 piers and some uh, uh, deck, uh, precast deck uh, beams. Um, and I asked the contractor, uh, do you want the funds? Because then you can put the machine then. And the guy said, no, 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 I have 2,000 guys on site, they've been manually, so, okay. <laughs> but uh, we were doing beam because the contractor asked us to do, because he knew 
He knew it, it and that was from Middle East. Uh, he knew that. So the design wasn't um, uh, in, in Tecla, but for the shop drawings, the contractor knew, I want that, because the piers are so complex. If I'm going to have 2D, I'm going to have wrong bars and then wastage. But he refused to have the follows because he had some sort of, um, not slaves, but uh, more or less like that. <laughs> <laughs> From India. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Okay. It's a sh uh, you can see large. So why are we um, modeling? Um, you have no idea how many times I play with that, those bars around in order to avoid clashes in that, um, uh, in that area uh, of the deck. Uh, because, oh, we want seven bars there. It's not fitting. No, we need to fit seven bars. Okay, tell me where. Oh, okay, so let's change the, the design. And then check the, the calcs, say, okay, let's do this way. Uh, so it's very useful uh, to, to, to model. Uh, there we have the cages, and it can, again, export uh, for the guys to fabricate the rebar. But still work. As I said, it was a small jump. Uh, this is what they do. It's an amazing world uh, that uh, soon enough I will be in touch uh, with these um, amazing guys. They, they're using uh, Tecla for many years, from the time of x uh to uh, bend, to cut, uh, to manage uh, uh, the, all these uh, steel objects to weld <coughs> and the, the connection then with the steel project software. Uh, and this one is quite impressive, just to... Everyone wants to save money uh, and one way to save money is to reduce the waste, the wastage of material, right? So that is why they use that kind of software. They have the object, it's easy to understand and uh, Software just go there and try to, to place the, the, the best way to have uh, avoid wastage. PLM CNC uh, machines uh, connection again is a steel project software that they don't need to model anything. They, we used uh, Tecla objects with all the information uh, with the holes and the wells and all that, and then planning uh, very similar. Uh, I believe uh, with the workflow on site, when I talk about concrete or reinforcement, uh, and these guys they need to plan uh, every single uh, step uh, to assemble it, whatever, and this is a good example. Uh, they need to know exactly um, what to do uh, and make sure they have uh, all the, the data in order to be efficient and not wait to, oh, we forgot to do this and that object, and now we need to use a big plate. Uh, just to cut uh, three or four uh, different uh, extra pieces. So this brings us uh, to fabrication, uh, but um, it's still not being if we don't have a common data environment uh, platform. So it's a place where we can have our files, could be uh, the design intent, could be the 3D models, could be uh, reports. Uh, so a place where we can add our files, our models, collaborate between designers, collaborate with contractor, and the client, if he wants, he can check the progress uh, all the time. And I'll show you that live. I'll show you that live. And <coughs> that's here. So, this is our Trimble Connect, uh, common data environment. Uh, and you see here, I have access to all these projects. So let's say my project is bridges and tunnels uh, presentation. So I'm not just saying, do this, I'm doing it. So all my presentations are here with models, with uh, PowerPoints, with videos, is everything here. But and I have models. It could be PDFs with drawings, and probably I have some, uh, and it's here. Then you say, all right, that is nice for you, but what about the others? So if I go here to check my team, we should ask, do we have good internet? <laughs> no, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. 
that is that's a risk of doing this live. So I go to control my team here. Team. Around the world, I have 25, 24 members that I give access. My, my team in Helsinki. Uh, so this could be your team. So your office here, maybe uh, an office in a different country, uh, maybe the client, uh, they have access. And all these people here, I think you're not here yet, but you will. Uh, all these people here, they have access to my project, wherever that project is. Uh, but we don't stop here. Let me show you, for instance, you've seen the picture of this one. This is the model, and everything has been modeled. Uh, this one took me uh, 160 hours uh, because I was being paid just to do the model based in uh, 2D to 3D uh, and I use the spreadsheets and then the attributes are here. All the information, uh, it's here. So we could use, and uh, another um, real story, I, we used in that time was a different software, it was TechLabim site, now evolved to Trimble Connect. So I set up for a big job because Network Well wanted to keep track of all the changes, change management. So every time the Tecla user was saving, the IFC was being exported. And then the designers, they were going to use, let's call it Trimble Connect, and every time they were opening Trimble Connect, this IFC was the latest version. And then they would double check that. They say something here is missing, the bolts are not here for some reason. They can now go here and do a markup and they create a to-do, and they say, put the bolts, uh, M16s or whatever it is, and then they say the priority, when is the due date, and they can assign uh, to that specific uh, person. And then the modelers will have access to that, uh, they will do the change, save, and they could reply, done. Uh, when I set up that, honestly I thought, they're going to use these two or three days and then they get tired of that. After, in the end of the job, when I came back uh, to that project, because I was involved in another massive project, they were still using it. They were still using it to pass the information. And the, the designers were maybe hand drafting some details and then adding the files. The files here say, do this detail. Instead of making a copy, put the copy to the lab guy's desk and then no one knows where is the marker. <coughs> So everything was stored uh, for the markers and changes uh, inside uh, the software. So we can see the models, we can bring complex ones. This is, when, this is the bridge uh, I'm modeling now with a new tool where you see the, the super elevation changed. And the only thing I modeled traditionally in Tecla were the foundations. All the rest was with the tool that I'm going to show after, even the abutments and this strange, because it's uh, double curved uh, geometry. But we can have precast, this one has rebar, I think. Some precast, so let's hide the concrete. No, okay, no concrete there, but we have other information. Let's see if I have some. Reinforcement here. Maybe this one, even if it is just an example. Yeah, I was just playing with the complex complex viaduct and playing with some bars using that tool that I've shown uh, before. So you can have all your models here. You can have PDFs. You can have uh, documents, uh, spreadsheets, uh, even emails. Save your uh, information here. And now we're getting there. Now it's, uh, it's needed. So if the clients then are not using this information, we need to tell them, hey, use this, because everything, uh, everything is here for you to do some asset management. And there is um, developments with the universities, uh, in this case in Helsinki, uh, where they connect the bridge sensor data uh, to the model, and then they have uh, real uh, time um, capture of the bridge movement for some, uh, you know, those big bridges, not a highway bridge, but uh, those uh, signature bridges, <coughs> they need to capture that information. So they place the, the, the sensors, they have the model, they place the object connected with that sensor, 
and then you have the, the information. Uh, when I say real time, even if it is every 30 minutes, so after a span, uh, you have the, 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 the movement. And they are developing, uh, and we are investing uh, even in research with the universities uh, to take that uh, further. If we talk about development, I want to show some technology that we are um, developing. And remember, we are on a live, this is live, I'm on internet. I'm going to open the point cloud. So you, you recognize the environment, it's Tribal Connect. In this case, is a development. Uh, uh, platform, but it's Trimble Connect, the, the, the engine, and now I'm going to open here the point cloud. And we all know that is, it is a pain to deal with point clouds. Not anymore. Okay, so now I need to wait this to refresh, and then I need to play with the settings to have, we could have photogrammetry precision, uh, because you see, this is loading through our trim beam technology. Let's choose here. Because we can then bring our models and have the, the point cloud with the, the design that we want to build. Maybe we bring the road alignment with triangulation from Cebus uh, 3D, for instance. And then we, we compile everything. And then the client can, can have a look. And everyone can have a look on that. So the precision of the point cloud is important. I've seen a demo of this with 400 gigabytes. And then even those 400 gigabytes, after it's loaded, and you see how fast it's loading, this was happening at the same. So you are not there just zooming, and then you need to can read the newspaper. Not anymore. Not anymore. So uh, I'm allowed to show this. It's under development. Uh, but this is, uh, we are pushing on that. We are very, uh, very good with the laser scanning. Uh, but we're finding ways of the technology for you to use the point clouds in an efficient manner. You cannot wait 10 minutes every time we, we, we want to move the model. Okay? Um, and the, the other models are here. I need to hide. It is the same thing. Uh, I can try to open one. Hopefully it works. It's here. See how fast this model loaded with a rebar, with a still work, all the other goods here. This is internet. This is internet. So it's not, um, the, the secret here is the Dream Beam technology that uh, compresses uh, the, the files without losing any attribute. So that is uh, the, what is behind these engines. So 